Mm. What's up, there. everybody? <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to Tuck Cool Takes, episode 117. Al's here, Liam's here, I'm Mike. We're all here. Uh, Squad. I feel like uh, I feel like for people like coming in that don't listen to all the time, like, we do have to introduce ourselves every once in a while. Just yeah, totally fitting. It makes me feel important too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's like, oh, you know, we're you know, big, big guys. But um, but yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I know we have a we we got to do an episode, but I don't know if there's much to talk about. You know, like not really much Nothing, going on no. with the uh, nah. with the the Patriots stratosphere, right? Uh, no, I mean, just another day in the dynasty. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, they have a new head coach. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we'll first time in we'll start twenty four years. And it's uh, it's not Mike Vrabel. We were um, I think a lot of people forgot about. Well, I, the, the Patriots have signed Gerard Mayo to be the head coach of the team yes. moving forward. Just to kind yeah. of start it out there. Um, they Bitty they won. they they put a little tidbit in his contract, I guess. Um, I guess last off season was when they put it in there that they planned on, on him being the succession plan to Belichick. So I guess if you put that in the contract, you don't need to go through the whole hiring process. The NFL does. So, I mean, just typical Patriots being the Patriots, like you can take, of course. you can take Belichick out of the Patriot system, but you can't take, the 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 Belichick <laughs> the out Patriot of the Patriot away. System. yeah yeah Literally. you know what I mean yeah. so like, how can I everything. skirt the rules here everything they do is is a little sneaky there so um so yeah Gerard Mayo is uh is the head coach I think I'll just uh opening statements and then we'll get into it because a lot of people seem happy but I saw a lot of people also latching on to like the process like why did they do it this way why didn't they interview other people and stuff like that but I think just kind of a general statement to start it um. I'm happy. I like that Mayo's here. Uh, he's been in the Patriot system his entire professional career. Um, so I think that's that's a pro. You can also say that's a con if you want, but I'm gonna say that's a pro. Um, I think it's a he's a good he's a good figure to kind of bridge the old generation with the new because he played on the team kind of as that was happening. You had like the older guys, and then you also had kind of some of the the newer ones coming in. So um I think it's a I think it's an A signing. Um, I I I think if there was a guy you were gonna pick, he should have been on the top of everybody's list, and I'm all for it. So, how do you guys feel about it? I just want to propose a question, I guess, just to kind of get this going. Al, I know you said you were very realistic on the last show, saying that you knew it was going to be Mayo or Vrabel, but you wanted Ben Johnson. Not even trying to be spiteful and be like, "Oh, that didn't happen." Like, what are I'm curious what you think now having yeah. gone through like do you think ben johnson's still the better candidate and obviously they didn't even give anyone a shake outside I mean, of the organization i mean honestly i knew johnson was a an extreme long shot. yeah there yeah. was there was no chance i mean this move makes a ton of sense i mean it, they didn't want this to be lengthy they didn't want it to be this whole drama. Like it wasn't thing. even 24 hours after. They, it wasn't even 24 they hours. They expedited that process. It wasn't even like it wasn't even like 18 hours. I think it was yeah. like 14 hours later. It's like, oh yeah, Mayo's the head coach. Well, here, actually, you know what? Math teacher, let's do some math on it. So the the press conference was at two. And then he got hired at like 8 30 the next day. So yeah, it was like 18 and a half hours. It was like 18 and a half hours. God That's exactly damn. what it was. 18 and a half hours. That's crazy. They really wasted no time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Bill, I Bill probably wasn't even out of the state. They're like, yeah, I know. He, yeah. he was probably driving <laughs> yeah. out of the stadium and Mayo yeah. was coming in. He was like, like <laughs> <"All right, Gerard." laughs> they lock eyes. <laughs> what, what are you doing in my spot this time? Oh, I see it now. Like that yeah. clip from Zoolander where it's uh, <laughs> yeah. Ben they, they Stiller walk walking by Owen yeah. Wilson. They're like, Looking at each other, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or it's like the, drives by no, good. it's like the Spider Man gift. They're just like pointing at each other. They're like, yeah. wait yeah. a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but <clears throat> I would have liked to see them maybe interview like one or two candidates just to kind of get some perspective, kind of see like what other candidates would say to certain questions that like Kraft would have and everything. But you know what? For I will give Robert Kraft credit for this getting it done in less than a day so that way that's the first question that we all had okay who's going to be the coach all right mm -hmm. done easy next so we have the head coach now and listen i don't know if you guys saw this on social media but it was like christian gonzalez marcus jones devonta Everyone. parker juju uh daniel Ukwale, like a, wilson, uh, Mac wilson a, a bunch of, of them were like 
yo, this is this is good. Like this is yep. a good move by the Patriots. We're happy for it. And <laughs> strangely enough, our our bitter enemy Trent Brown deciding to repost oh, the the tweet. I think Taylor or Kyle's might have had it. Mm-hmm. But it was, you know, that Mayo's the guy and everything else now. So it's like maybe, he also maybe... hasn't acknowledged Belichick being gone. Have you guys noticed that Trent Brown has not no. said, tweeted anything? So as far as I'm concerned, he can fuck off. But there's also uh, former players too, like so Vince weird. Wilfork, Dion Branch, yeah. um, Rodney Harrison. I think said well, something. If Teddy Bruschi, then, then Teddy Bruschi, my favorite Patriots player of all time. Down. But everybody, yeah, yeah. everybody is jumping on the Gerard Mayo bandwagon. So yeah, I'll yeah. keep going. All of a sudden, yeah. no, no, all of like, sudden Trent yeah. Brown's like. The Patriots are such a well-run organization. It was a <laughs> great. I'm like, going to fuck up. Love it. I am going to backtrack everything that I have posted yes. and everything. What are you talking about? I didn't like that tweet about Bill leaving. What do you mean? <laughs> but just to kind of wrap it up and to keep it short and sweet, it's a good hiring. I think we're going to see the results of the X's and O's from Mayo in a year or two. But for right now, good move. Now your next task is is PM, which I know we're going to talk about in a second. We're going to talk about the GM hopefully in the next couple of minutes or get ready for the draft just and get ready for free agency because those are the three big things that you need. GM, free agency, draft. Make sure you nail them now. It's time to get to work. Al, you said something. I want to, because I, I saw a lot of, I saw a lot of people kind of talking about this and a lot of like the, the Patriots media being a little bit like uh, pushing back against the signing too. And it's not even the fact that people don't like the signing itself. Like everybody seems to be behind Gerard Mayo, the person, the, the, the former player, him being the coach. But I see a lot of people. So this is the process you go through. You just, this is your guy. You don't hire or you don't interview anyone else. And I heard you mention that too. And my thing is, it's like, I equate it to like the, the, the three of us are going out to, are going out to, uh, to a restaurant, right? Let's just say we're going to Applebee's. I know what I'm getting. Dollar Why am I gonna? I might. I might look at the menu real quick just to see anything jumps out at me, whatever. But I'm not gonna they have, have the waiter out. read me the specials and go. Hmm, right. Okay, let me think. Uh, no, I'm gonna. No, I already know what I'm getting. So why prolong it? Like, if this was their guy, clearly it was because they put it in there. I understand. Like, you could look at it, but like, who are you gonna look at? Like Ben Johnson. So you're gonna take a while to interview him, you know, he's going to want to get other head coaching interviews as well. And he really yeah. can't right now. Cause he's in, he's coaching in the playoffs right now. So like, you can't really do that. Mike Vrabel. Sure. Maybe, but like you, you know what you, you kind of saw with Vrabel. You probably talked to him before. Who are you going to wait for? Jim Harbaugh. He's going to have a bunch of things. All these other processes were going to be long and drawn out. You, you have the guy. And then also, if you were to look at other people, Mayo might look at that and be like, dude, I thought, you told me that I was the guy. Now you're looking yeah. at other people. It would make so, an already bad organization. Yeah, the last it's a bad years start. Look even worse. So like, just yeah, I, it would be I get that some people, you know, Vrabel was the hot name, which I still will never understand. But like, other than the fact that it's Mike Vrabel, a name that people know, but like, it just seems like it's something people are like, I get bringing it up like you did, where it's like, you know, you would have liked to yeah. maybe see him get other people, but whatever. Like, I, I, it's just people are looking for something to complain about. And it's like, just move on. We got the guy. Like, there's plenty yeah. of other things to complain about right now. Gerard Mayo's the guy right. moving forward. I'm happy about it. I don't care what the process was. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, it does make sense. I mean, yeah. hypothetically speaking, a couple of years ago, I think it was 2021, if uh, Andy Reid spontaneously wanted to retire, the Chiefs would have promoted Eric Bieniemy to the head coach Mm-hmm. position it would have been a layup because he was he was a top candidate to get jobs now yeah. he's in washington it would have just been a no-brainer move. he already knows the system he runs a fantastic offense just yeah, move just him up it. as head coach like they would have done the same thing so it's yeah, yeah it, you don't, it was a no-brainer you don't want to interview people in like because that you're having these people in for interviews and it's like it's kind of like a lame duck interview like they know that yeah. you're not gonna yeah. hire them like, a, you know a few what? college guys in there they're like i'm gonna run the you know uh, yeah, a spread it's offense like, like, it's no, honestly we don't like want that. it's honestly like last year when they had the interviews for offensive coordinator like everyone knew o'brien was gonna get it everyone yeah everyone that had a brain knew they're like okay bill o'brien's gonna be the guy and then they're interviewing like <clears throat> there was someone last year he was like a draft pick of the patriots and he interviewed for the job i forget his name off yeah. the top of my head yeah no, I know. Like, I, I forget I don't the name, but yeah, all. I remember. See, yeah. that's just it, because no one, everyone knew it was yeah. going to be Bill O'Brien. So it's yeah. like, so it's like, let's just move on. But, um, but yeah, Mayo being the coach, I mean, he's 
young. The Patriots go from the oldest head coach in the league after Pete Carroll uh, left. Belichick was the oldest head coach to the youngest one. Um, yeah. He's younger than he's Sean already McVay. beaten Sean McVay. Yeah, he's already beaten yeah. Sean McVay. So, um, against Sean McVay so far. Tight, yeah, like so that. I, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so I think uh, you know, and I kind of, I kind of want to bring this part up because I think this is the important part with him. There was a quote. Uh, I wish I could have it. I'll pull it up maybe after I bring it up. We start talking. I'll pull it up so I can actually get it out there. But it's something along the lines of uh, Mayo being like, he understands you have to kind of coach from a place of love or something like that to where you gotta. You still got to be hard on people and all that stuff, but it's a new day and age. You kind of have to build a relationship first. Then you can be as tough as you want on them. And I think that's right. the perfect, he is the perfect guy right now to to bridge or to go into the new era post Belichick, where he still has a lot of those Belichick um, like thought processes and culture and all that. But he's also going to bring that new, new bit in there where like he does have more of a relationship with some players because he is closer in age, which I think that's a little blown out of proportion with Mm -hmm. Belichick. But still, like, it's important, you know, you have a younger guy and and it's kind of, you know, he can bring in some new ideas and things like that. So what what, what do you guys think of just him kind of the the type of culture that he's going to he's going to bring forward. Like, are we going to get, like, is it going to be similar to Belichick, but just a little bit, you know, spiced up a little bit, which is what I'm hoping. Or what do you guys think with that? I I think we're going to get, I think we're going to get traits of Belichick. Like we're going to get certain like aspects of the Belichick tenure, but I think you're going to see like, I don't, I I don't want to say like a new school approach, but you're going to get more of like the players coach type of mentality. That's like, you know, he's not going to be this hard ass, but he's also going to be someone that can relate to the players, can connect to the players and also get the best out of every single player. Yeah, Because I think Belichick for as great of a, of a head coach as he is, I think with this new generation of, of, of talent and just like the new generation of the athlete, I think sometimes he did struggle to make those connections. And I think that's something that Gerard Mayo has to his advantage. And I think that's something that you're going to see as the year goes on. So that that's where I think it's going to be a little bit of Belichick, but you're going to see those distinct differences with Mayo at the fold. Dare I say there's a bit of a Dan Campbell comparison here with him being a former tight end in the league. I think yes. Dan Campbell's a little more rah, rah. He's more of we're going to break your legs type guy. I, I never watching Gerard Mayo when he was on the Patriots, he was never the rah, rah guy. That was Brandon spikes. Like he wasn't the one before in pre games that would, you know, do like the Ray Lewis or Drew Brees chant in the middle with all the guys around him. That wasn't Gerard Mayo. He was like the, Lead by example, the quiet, calculated. He was the quarterback of the defense, the middle linebacker. Let Brandon Spikes do all the talking, you know, plenty of the hard hitting, a lot of like the lunatic shit. And he was just the X's and O's telling everyone where to go. So I think it's going to be a lot of um, like the Dan Campbell thing where he's going to inspire his players to really want to play for him, where he Gerard Mayo knows what it's like to be a player, knows that the players get screwed in some deals and whatnot. He's going to be very affectionate. They're probably going to be more open to him in that way. Uh, I do think there's a little bit of something to the relationship. I think Bill had a fine relationship with players, but when they look at Gerard Mayo, like you said, there's not much of an age difference. He literally was in their shoes a couple of years ago. He's been in this organization. I agree with Al, where it's going to be a little bit to Belichick. We're going to run a tight ship, no fucking around. Like, Gerard Mayo can fuck these players up. He's he's not mm-hmm. much older than them. He can will jack their ass up if they're stepping out of line. They're, they're more scared of him than they would be a 71-year-old man. Right. But. I think it's going to be very calculated. It's going to be quiet. It's going to be lead by example. It's like, it's going to be, we're going to follow a little bit of Belichick's book, but this is going to be all X's and O's, all strategy. We're going to run this to perfection. And I think it's going to inspire the guys to really fucking ball out for the dude. He's only 37 years old. That's That's crazy crazy. to think about. Really could still be playing. Yeah. I was going to say, Teddy Bruce played until like 35. Right. Yeah. It's nuts. It's nuts. But yeah, no, I am. uh, I think, um, I think this is definitely different vibes from the last little bonus episode that we did. Yeah. Um, yeah. still, I'm, st- I'm still hurt. Still yeah. sucks. Still for sure sucks. I want to know where Belichick's going to go. So we'll keep an eye on that obviously too. But, um, but yeah, I just, I think you, you gotta be, you gotta be at least optimistic about yeah, the comfort level scale of one to 10 like how comfortable are we going in because obviously like i'm a little uncomfortable without mm-hmm. having the first time in 24 years with no belichick and brady it's it's, it's that meme i sent you guys it feels like there's ginger ale in my skull like it's yeah. it's fucking weird yeah how comfortable are we scale of one to ten going into the season 
Uh, I mean, I, mean uh, I don't know. Seven. I'm just going to go seven. seven. Just like even seven right now. That's me. Yeah. yeah. Are we, and we're talking just Mayo being the head coach. Just right? coach. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah. coach. Yeah. Just the head coach. Yeah. And I'm going to go. Think about how we have the fucking most money to spend. Got like 70 million. Yeah. That's nice. I'm going to go with, I'm not going to go quite as high as Mike, but I'm going to go like five and a half. Yeah. I think that like right in the middle, a little bit over the middle, but at the same time, we have to see, like you guys just said, what are they going to do in free agency? What are they going to do with the draft? Like, are they going to be so bold enough? And I hate that I'm putting this into the universe, but you know, it could be true. And if Belichick was still here, this would definitely be on the table. Are they going to keep number three? Are they going to trade number three? Dude, you I mean, cannot trade the number three. If they do, no, no. You want to know why they can't? Because we'll talk about it a little later because Kraft, so will, funny. Kraft will get involved at that point and say, we cannot yeah. trade the number three pick. Because like, how be, funny would it be if Gerard Mayo just does the same thing Belichick's done for years? He's like, ah, we'll get a million picks. There's, there's one trade I would do for with that number three pick, and only one trade. Do you guys want to guess? I've mentioned him before. Oh, Justin Jefferson. Yep. That's the yeah. only trade that I would do. If yeah. Minnesota was willing to give up Justin Jefferson to, because he wasn't going to sign long-term with Minnesota and they need a quarterback anyway, I would be – and they said to New England, we'll give you Jefferson, but you got to give us number three in like a first round next year. I'd be like, yep, sign me up. What what pick do the Vikings have? Like, They – yeah, they're, they're, mid for, they're mid first round, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 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 I would assume. See, I would do that. You know what? Do that and then trade back into the first and get like Michael Penix or something if you think he's going to be taken. So do I we would... like Michael Penix? <laughs> Mike's, Mike's that, a huge Penix for that guy. For that second tier of quarterbacks, he's, he's at the top of that for me. I, yeah, like if we're talking I about the he other kind of melted down in that championship game. Yeah, I know, but you know what? I that I don't put much because like JJ yeah. McCarthy balled out. You think he's gonna? You think yeah. he's gonna? You know, blow the doors off? JJ I don't McCarthy. think so. So yeah, no, I think I could I could see that. That'd be good. Um, do, do you guys think that Mayo's um lack of head coaching experience is is as big a deal as people are saying? Because from my eyes. Every single great coach you see started with zero head coaching yeah. experience. I know people are talking about he mm -hmm. wasn't even a coordinator, whatever. There's also a coach coaching right now that never had a coordinator position. Um, Andy Reid, ever heard of him? Yeah. So I, I don't. He's kind of good. Old quarterbacks like, coach for Brett Favre. Yeah. Like, I'm not worried, but like, do you guys put uh, a ton of stock into that where, you know, no, you know, you, you, you could have, and this is why people say you could have interviewed other candidates who have head coaching experience, but I just don't think that that always equals success. So. No, I don't think so either. It's like, uh, it, it's the new is always better approach. If anything, I think it's a little bit of an advantage where everyone's going into this blind, like other teams mm -hmm. don't know what to expect from the Patriots at all. Like us, they're probably like, there's going to be a lot of similar things, but I'm sure there's going to be some different things. And that's the worst area to be in where you're in this gray area in the middle where you're like, I have no idea what to expect from this team. So week one, probably to like week eight, we have a huge advantage where no one has any fucking idea what we're doing. They'll probably look at Bill O'Brien and be like, all right, the offense is going to be kind of similar to what they had beforehand. They don't exactly know what to expect from the defense. And I'm sure Gerard Mayo being a former rookie of the year and stud Super Bowl winning linebacker is going to put out a more than capable defense with guys that are already ballers. Right. Yeah. And not and not only that, it's like, how do you gain experience if nobody gives you that experience? Exactly. So so it's like Gerard Mayo, yeah, it's his first head coaching job. Yes, we understand that. But obviously, you got to give him a chance to actually do the job first before we're all, you know, jumping down his throats. Yeah. Unlike Phil Perry, who doesn't want to, you know, give him a chance at all. That's that's an unprovoked oh. shot. But like every every head coach started with like Sean McVay completely took the league by storm. Everyone's like, I don't know if this guy can do this. He was an old like, whatever coach he was for Washington. I don't know if he's got it. Completely took the league by storm. Chip Kelly comes I think, in. I think he was uh I think he was tight ends coach actually. Was he? I thought I think so. Was, yeah, maybe. Uh, they, they had a loaded uh coaching core back then for they were, a they terrible really team. But um yeah, and then he completely took the lead by storm. Chip Kelly comes in to run that new system. No one knows what to expect. He had the most success in his first two years and then flatlined because no one knew how to guard him. No one knew what to expect, and he went out and balled. So I think, if anything, they got an advantage starting out with completely no expectations. Yeah, I mean, you see that with 
with any first time head coach. I, I like everybody, Mike McDaniel, Sean, like everybody, yeah. people you've mentioned, it's like they, they take the league by storm to start. And it and then seems it just... more often than not, it works like fucking uh, Brandon Staley had a lot of successes first. Like, yeah. Year, and, and, then, and then you sucked. just got to sustain yeah. it. Like, you know, like, yeah. or, or you could go the Dan Campbell route where you can see you're building something. And, and yeah. this is part of why I'm a big, and, and the lions are playing today. Uh, we're recording Sunday lions are playing the night game. Um, so go lions. Cause I, the no reason I like the lions, the re the reason I like them is because they, they did it right to me. They, they found their guy. They went with it. They went through the growing pains of the first couple of years. Remember everybody made fun of them for being emotion, Dan Campbell, being emotional at the end of the season. Yeah. Cause they lost blah, blah, blah. But guess what? The players mm -hmm. see that shit. They like it. If the they players will play for you, this is what happens. So I'm hoping the Patriots can have some sort of a mix between like, you still have a good year. I don't think we have to have like a shitty whatever year, but like I have a good year teams, uh, the players play for you and hopefully, you know, in the playoff it, hunt towards the it's end. It's kind of the polar opposite of what's going on with Dennis Allen and uh, New Orleans with that. He literally, his job was safe up until the last game of the season. And then Jameis yep. Winston pulled that victory formation touchdown. Yep. And Dennis Allen did not support his team at all. Went up there and apologized like a gigantic wimp and just yep. made an ass of himself. Yeah, everybody the hates whole it. team sides with Jameis. And then all of a sudden, now he's probably going to get fired this off season after yeah. having his job secure the whole season. It's like, dude, you didn't back your team. Now you look like an idiot. Like Dan Campbell would have went up there and went, stop us. Like, yeah, I'm not yeah, going to apologize. Mean, exactly. Yeah. You know, I put, I put faith in my players. So yeah. Mm. I th So just to just kind of wrap up, cause I do want to move on to the next thing, which is uh, a little bit more alarming. Um, Gerard Mayo, we all give it a uh, thumbs up for the Gerard mm. Mayo signing. I'm assuming. Um, do we do we like the fact that it was kind of done in a sneaky patriot way by putting some stuff into the contract? Yeah. I think we all two thumbs Still up. Still makes that me one. smile. Yeah, uh, love that. Love that. Um, but Mayo, head coach, very important, very important part. But arguably, maybe the most important hole to fix is the GM because you have a GM. You know, Belichick played the de facto GM and head coach, so he kind of spent the money and you know cooked with the groceries, but. You need someone to to spend the money and do that stuff. And the Patriots, the report came out that they they seem content to hold off from signing an actual naming an actual GM until after the draft potentially. So they're going to do some weird pseudo double headed thing with um with Matt Grow and what's what's Wolf's first name? Elliot Elliot Wolf Elliot Wolf. Um, so. <clears throat> I don't know about you guys, and I kind of said the joke in the chat, and I feel like uh, the episode from The Office where they have the the two managers when it's Jim and uh, Jim and Michael when Oscar's like, yeah, who 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 doesn't remember, you know, the two captains of the show or the two popes or things like that? Yeah. It's like, yeah, there's there's always been two two leaders for every great thing. So I don't <laughs> I don't know what um what Kraft's thought process is with this, uh, unless he plans on hiring one of these people. But if that's the case, just do it. Like, I don't th like this to me, isn't like a coordinator position where you can kind of float through and not name one, but have them call the play. Like th this is your GM. If it's not Belichick, who we all knew was the GM, like feel like you have to name someone. This is arguably the most important off season of the Patriots recent history. I can't think of one that's more important uh, that had, that's been more important. You can talk about maybe the one right after Brady, but this is different. This is the coach. This is the, yeah. this is the, the, the patriarch the of the thing. Yeah. So yeah. I, how, how do you guys feel about that? Because I am, I am very much out on Robert Kraft right now. Uh, I even jokingly asked you guys how much you think he could sell the team for. I am very much out on him. And we're going to talk about it later in a little bit about an article that's come out or things that have come out, why they're coming out, who's leaking what information to who, but how do you guys feel about this, this double-sided GM role we're going to have? Well, you guys are way more in touch with the GM search and the status of the GM more than I am. And you guys had your problems with Matt Grow, right? You guys are very Yeah, skeptical. Matt Grow. Yeah, very skeptical. This is more Al. Grow. Like Al is one that we're like, when it comes to GMs, I don't, I don't know as much like I'll like try to read up on him and stuff like that. I know that people don't like Matt grow, which is fine. Um, yeah. I mean, but he's why? been like, what's the, he's been what's around. The big I, I, I think just, just cause he's been a part of the last few years here, which people don't like. But again, I, I, I keep hinting to what we're going to talk about. 
Robert Kraft has been meddling in football operation decision, personnel decisions. So maybe it's not all yeah. Matt Groh. I don't know. But yeah, Al, I guess. So I think we'll all just kind of defer to you. How do you feel about Because Elliot Wolf, I don't know a bunch about, but like. Sounds, sounds like the Wolf yeah. of Wall Street. Sounds so, like a cool name. I'm open to giving anybody a chance, even if it's Matt Groh. But how do you yeah. feel about all this? So I would have, similar to the head coaching kind of situation, I would have rather them gone out and like actually interviewed a couple candidates. There were a couple good candidates out there. There was um, Peters. Yeah, there was Adam Peters, who now is with the Commanders, which I didn't expect the Patriots to get him, but that would have been a great, great hire for GM. There's the guy Brown that's do um, that's friends with Gerard Mayo that mm-hmm. Mayo really really liked that he supposedly wanted. Uh, there was a couple other guys. There was the assistant guy in Kansas City, Mike. Uh, I forget his last name. Like, oh Zion yeah, it's a weird name. Yeah, it's, it's a weird Italian one, right? last yeah. name. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's some there's some others out there too. Like Dave Ziegler is another name. I I don't want Ziegler because of you know Vegas and everything. Yeah, I've heard a bunch about him. Yeah, yeah. the guy that the guy I wish the Patriots used had to be with the Patriots. Cr- Used to be with the Patriots and is yeah. now in Houston and Nick Casario. Because look at what yeah. he's done with Houston and taking CJ Stroud number two overall. He's looking like a genius for that pick. You might want to stay there. Why the fuck would you leave? The Houston I know. looks like they're building something. Did you guys watch the game last night? I watched uh, the first half. Lost. Unbelievable, dude. They they look they look good. I don't think that that the Texans are going to go anywhere like further than this round or anything. But they look they're building something. But yeah, Casario did, has. Did done you guys see that tight end who had the seventy six yard touchdown? Yeah, that was. Yeah, what's his? Uh, yeah, yeah. Insane. Anyone know where Crazy. he went to school? The U. Where? I think you. you know who else went to the U? David Njoku. Yeah, I love David motherfucker. I love yeah, David Jones. and Denzel right. Perryman's on the uh, Texans too. He's the man. Denzel Perryman. There you go. Yep. But yeah, Elliot Wolf. If he's the guy that's in charge of decision making because he's very respected within the organization, if he's the head guy, I'm okay with it because it seems like he has a good sense of just draft prospects and understanding the draft process and free agency and stuff like that. I would be fine with that. If Matt Groh is in charge of it, then I have some hesitations because he has just been. He has been so just like off with his last couple of drafts and like draft analysis, like and the obvious pick and and he's still young and can still make a contribution. But Cole Strange in the first round, when everyone else was laughing at the Patriots for taking Cole Strange at that moment because he could have been available in like the third round or something, but had almost as many yards as Juju. He written <laughs> maybe. Uh, one more yard, and they could have won that. Uh, maybe won that Dolphins game. And oh, remember that game? God, remember the good times? Oh, yeah. I don't even want to talk about this year. This year, to me, the first like... the first three weeks were the best because there was yeah, one really win cool. in there, and then two. You we were hopeful. That... Yep, but just to kind of wrap it up, and again, I'm not the say all be all. I just get what I get off of you know Twitter mm-hmm. X and you know talking yeah. with like friends and stuff like that about it. But <clears throat> I would like to see them actually get a, a new GM to show the, the, you know, signs of change that the times are actually changing and not just go with this, you know, Oh, Gerard Mayo is going to have control with someone else. But I do like the Gerard Mayo. It was reported that he's reaching out to external candidates to like bring them in. I do like that because it shows that they're willing to give Mayo at least a little bit of control and bring in his guys that he wants and keep his guys that he wants. So I'm, I'm, I'm liking that. There's something to be said about a GM that just, completely goes balls to the wall and plays almost like a, a Madden franchise where they go out and don't care about money. They want to get the studs. They want to compete every single year. Like I know I harp on it all the time, but like Howie Roseman of the Eagles is like one of the best GMs ever because every year he's just like looking at Buda Baker this year. AJ he traded for Shaq Leonard. Yep. AJ Brown. He's like, always like, let me just stockpile all these studs. You know, we'll draft all these Georgia guys and, who are the sick players in the league? We have needs. We need a safety. Let's trade for Kevin Byard from Tennessee. Like we got holes. And we let's pick up Julio Jones just for the fuck of it because he's yep. he's a proven player. I there's something to be said about a GM that's just willing to spend, willing to go, and I don't see very many of them. Like he might be the only one I know besides maybe um, John Lynch with uh, the. Uh, 49ers who goes out and uh, they really just draft most of their talent but like you know they made the swing for Christian McCaffrey which worked you don't see many teams that are willing to like fucking really swing the baseball bat fucking try and hit a home run a lot of them are like yeah I'll get a single like play it safe 
which worked, which is why Belichick worked for so long. But now, and I think Al, you you were you were ahead of ahead of us, definitely ahead of me on this one earlier in the year. I think you need to you need to start swinging for the fences now. You need to start getting these players, and you also need to start drafting. May, may, sometimes the obvious pick is the good one. Sometimes you draft Debo Samuel. Sometimes you draft yeah. these players, you know, sometimes like it's, that just makes yeah. sense. I get that you need offensive line help. You need these things. Cole Strange, I think, is going to be a very good player. He has been when he's healthy, a little unhealthy this year, a little injured. But it's like sometimes, though, like you need this certain player. So that's why to kind of round out the draft talk, too. I don't think they're going to trade back. I think they're going to they're going to take that pick. But I just like I, we've all heard the same too many cooks like you have two GMs two de facto GMs. You, you're going right. to have Kraft and his old wrinkly balls meddling around in the war room. You got Gerard Mayo, who's going to want to start to put his imprint on the team, not in an egotistical way, but just he's going to yeah. want to start to build the team how he wants. Like, you're going to have Bill O'Brien, assuming he's here. He's probably going to want to have some input because like, hey, you fucked me last year with what you gave me. Let me try to give some input this time. Still no defensive coordinator. Potentially, Dante Hightower might be the DC, which would be fucking incredible. Imagine. Um, but like, there's, there's just there. It. I would rather just go into this draft with like, like one GM, one cut. Like you're ready yeah. to go. It just seems. It's not like, a guarantee that it's going to be a problem, but it leaves a lot of margin no. for error. Like, what are we right. going to bounce yeah. one decision around seven different people? No, let's mitigate this. No. Let's make it four people. Let's make it five people, as minimal as possible. Because I'm sure there's going to be arguments. We really don't need any more problems let's make some decisive fucking yeah uh moves here yeah that would be the way to go but um but yeah that, that's kind of my talk on the gm you guys have any final thoughts about the gm uh carousel going on i don't know uh, i'm I'm no, sure i think just, if i had my money on it they'll pick elliot if i had just to. name name the gm and move on again checklist yeah. head coach check Done. gm hopefully check okay now focus on free agency and the draft that's what yeah, it should now be. personnel it yeah done. Yeah, you, you got done. one of the three check that you, you got the coach, like you said. You you, you like half ass checked the the GM and now personnel, but that's not gonna happen. That's gonna be months and months of of talking, and we'll do that later. But um but yeah, there's there's been a shit ton. And and I always I always say Al because Liam, I know that you don't peruse Twitter as much as as Al no. and neither one of you as much as me, because I don't have a life. But like <laughs> there's there, there was the Seth Wickersham article, who, yeah. if that name sounds familiar to Patriots fans, he did the big, big, uh, I don't want to say hit piece, but for lack of a better term, between Brady and Belichick, the whole drama, button heads there. He did that years ago. Um, it just seems like whenever the Patriots, there's drama boiling up, this little shithead pops up out of nowhere. But um, the the article basically, and I'll bring up some things here and there, but it it outlined that the relationship between Kraft and Belichick had been deteriorating a little pre Brady, but especially since Brady left. Um, one of, one of the things that kind of jumped out to me, Jonathan Kraft got brought up a lot. Jonathan Kraft, I guess about Belichick said that the game had passed him by. We got to get him out of here. I guess Jonathan Kraft had been putting down Belichick at every turn behind the scenes, talking kind of down to Belichick there. Um, and then Kraft as well. But I kind of just wanted to start with the Jonathan Kraft thing. I did. Did you guys know that Jonathan was as fucking involved in all this as, as like he seems to be now. I thought he was just kind of the son that was waiting in the wings that would chill in the yeah. press box. I think it's kind of the assumption, right? Like nepotism. Yeah. Like I, I believe like Steve Belichick probably had a lot more pull than we thought too. Like, I think it's, it's purely nepotism where it's like, all right, like every father wants their son to, you know, follow in their footsteps and do greater and, you know, have like make their own decisions and be like a real man. And friggin', I'm sure Robert Kraft is old and he's like, all right, like, you know, I have the utmost faith in my son. Let's start giving him more leeway and more decisions. Yeah. It, yeah. It's kind of the same thing for me. It's basically, it's basically Jonathan's waiting for Robert to finally give it to him. And, you know, he's kind of learning a lot, just like in the, just like in the pros when you're, you know, perfect example, Gerard Mayo waiting until Belichick's gone yeah. and then he takes it over. Like that's, that's the situation that it is. And I think we're closer to having Jonathan running the team than we might like or anticipate. So, and maybe that'll be better. Maybe it'd be better if Jonathan was, in full control as opposed to Robert at this point. 
I'll tell you guys though, you guys, if you guys want, I'll give you my ESPN. Cause I found out, I was telling Al before we came on, I have an ESPN login, I guess. So I could oh, read that sure. article about, yeah, because I have Disney plus. So it's the same thing. It's oh, that ESPN and Hulu. So, uh, yeah. Cause um, you said it was behind a paywall. Yeah. So I logged in. I, I think you guys will be singing a different tune if you read the whole thing. Cause it does not paint Jonathan Kraft or Robert Kraft in a good light whatsoever. About How much this. merit do we give these? Well, we'll see, see, that's just it. Now, I don't know because there seems to be, it's another one of those things where, like I say about every article, there's like 30% truth. And if you have that, you sprinkle in a bunch of other stuff. In yeah. There. But like, like this yeah. thing, for instance, this one, this quote about Robert Kraft kind of got me. Uh, Over the years, those in Kraft's orbit, I fucking hate that phrase, by the way. I hate that for or like the, the the word confidant is used a lot in here belichick's confidants are talking first of all you think belichick's talking to a bunch of people and secondly you think he's going to talk to people who are going to talk to fucking seth wickersham do we I don't think know. belichick has confidants it's nick saban that's it the funny thing is i <laughs> bet that imagine if it comes out that like belichick is the one just leaking all this shit out um so but no the quote is uh, <laughs> over the years those in craft's orbit have heard the owner in quotes put down belichick at every opportunity a source close to craft said this game was no different. Talking about the game when uh, when Brady came back, they honored him. I guess this comes from the press box where Brady was there. A bunch of other people were in there. Kraft's open mocking of Belichick, a common line was the great intelligent man, was the worst kept secret in New England. Although he denied saying it through a team spokesperson, Kraft used that line too many times for too many people uh, in front of too many people for it to remain a secret. So people are basically saying that he's fucking mocking Belichick, saying things like that. Um, I don't know if I put too much stock into it, but it just seems like there's a bunch of things like that coming out where yeah. Kraft was started to meddle with some things. He started to take some power away from Belichick, which if that's the case, no wonder Belichick wanted to go, you know? So th there's another thing with Mac Jones I want to bring up, but what do you guys think of that? Where like, how, do, you, do you put much merit in it? Does, I, I am completely anti Kraft right now. So I put, it, it might not be right, but I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm sure he said that because Kraft thinks that he fucking built anything. When I think we're starting to see, it's not, did Brady make Belichick? Did Belichick make Brady? It's Belichick and Brady made Kraft. Because without it, yeah. he's an old perverted yeah. man who's in with Roger Goodell. That's it. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think it's like, um, with every, like you said, with every truth, there's a little bit of lie. Or with every lie, there's a little bit of truth in there. Yeah. So, like, maybe I believe it to an extent, but I think it's a lot like the old articles that would say, like, Brady and Belichick's relationship withered away toward the end and they started to despise each other and all that jazz. Like, I don't think anyone who's followed the Patriots for 20 some odd years really looks at Brady and Belichick and go, Yeah, I bet they hate each other. Like, no, that doesn't seem realistic. They seem to have a fantastic relationship on the field, off the field. Seemed like they could talk about everything football wise. And I can't imagine there be many problems yep. maybe toward the end when they get bounced in the first round by the titans yeah things get a little squirrely blame gets thrown around so maybe there's a little bit of merit there but i think the same thing where it's like yeah he probably said some backhanded comments but realistically belichick probably had some backhanded comments about robert Kraft too it's a business and everyone's at work and so when the bullets are flying you know it's not very it like hard to imagine that both sides got a little frustrated and said some dumb things that they didn't exactly mean or were like very angry at the other. So I think there's a little bit of merit, but not nothing too serious. If anything, like you said, it's a hit piece. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna add really anything else that hasn't been said. It's it just would seem weird that Robert Kraft would openly mock the head coach that gave him the success of his franchise and also made his franchise worth billions of dollars if he wanted to sell it like i know you joked about him selling it but he could get billions of dollars for the patriots if he wanted to yeah so th to do that i think would really be like either craft like did it one time and he was joking about it and then someone ran with it or like a lot of these writers do just try to find something run with it and then make it be a bigger deal than it is so yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't put too much stock into it, honestly. I think it's yeah. kind of, to be honest, I think it's kind of stupid. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, I, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of bringing the things up because I could be, I could be swayed either way. And um, I tend to lean on the side that you guys are saying where I do think that maybe he's mentioned something like that. 
you know, through the the passing along of information to to Seth Brickersham, it got you know blown out of yeah. proportion. I don't know. It, it's it's the equivalent of the the housewives of whatever city, Orange County, Atlanta, whichever city it is. The it's that equivalent for dudes, where it's like, oh, it's just a chance for like do people who like football to like get in on the gossip and be like, oh, they were talking shit about each other. Like if for some yeah, reason that makes humans sense. are are innately interested in shit like that. So I think it's more just like trying to get some gossip in there for the guys that like football. And a lot of people eat that shit up and I get it, but yeah. I try and avoid it. What do you guys think about the, um? and this one I might, I might see, this might be some of the, the truth part that I would lean into where Kraft was putting his input in a little bit more in the personnel things when it comes to Mac Jones, for instance, uh, cause there's something in here too, that, um, you know, you know, how we were all asking like, why are we still starting Mac Jones this year when he's been sucking for however long Yeah, people within the organization or people that talked to Seth Brickersham said that it was basically a fuck you to, to Robert Kraft going all the way back to Belichick. Didn't want to draft him. His hand was forced. He was content with waiting for David Mills, uh, who ended up going in the third round to the Texans. Um, I don't know about all that, but, but there was, there's just the, the words out there, the, the uh, story that that's why Belichick kept playing uh, Mac Jones because he was just kind of saying, you know, this is your guy that you want. Uh, craft, then this is this is what I'm going to do. Now, even saying that, I don't even know if I believe that because I think I heard the talk radio shows talking about that like five months ago, saying that same yeah. type of thing. Yeah. So I don't even know if I believe that, but I do believe that craft was meddling a little bit more in in the um in like the football operation because you could kind of see it probably with Belichick how he was talking about some of the players, you know, like. I like it, it did kind of change a little bit, like the words Belichick would use about certain players, how he would talk about them. So I don't know, but it, it, it definitely seems like Kraft was maybe giving his input a little bit more. What do you guys think about that? Do you guys think that was something that was happening a little bit, a lot, not at all? I, I, it, it was evident. It not only was it evident, it was 100% true because just look at what happened with the offensive coordinator situation after 2022. We heard the reports. Yep. Belichick wanted to keep Patricia and Belichick actually thought that the Patriots were making strides with Matt Patricia as offensive coordinator. If Belichick had his way, he would have kept Matty P for 2023 and see if they can improve on it. But Robert came in and said, and I think this was rightfully so where I think this was actually a good call by Robert. I'm like, no, he's like, no, we struggled last year. We were one game from the playoffs. If we had a decent offense, then we would have been fine. Let's go get an actual offensive coordinator that actually knows how to run an offense. And let's actually like get this thing back on track. Now, did it work out? No, but that's one of the moves where it's like, okay, I'm not going to blame Kraft for saying, I don't want a defensive coordinator as my offensive coordinator. We need to be better about it. Like that's an instance where it's like, if Robert didn't intervene, we'd be bitching about Robert not intervening and saying, why didn't you stop this? Definitely. It's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're nitpicking, if we didn't allow two fucking kick returns in the last game, we probably would have made the playoffs. Exactly. But, you know, friggin', I think the I offense, I think it truly was making strides toward the end. Like, the Vikings game, we put up points, had a killer offense, had a touchdown taken off the board because of the refs. The Raiders game, the offense was fine. Again, touchdown given to the Raiders. That was very questionable. And then the last game, we give up two kick returns and lose by a very slim margin. So it's fucking it, – there's a million different factors and whatnot. I um I agree, though. Like, the change was probably necessary there. I, I kind of agree with Belichick. Where it's like, hey, you know, there, there were improvements, but – Bill O'Brien's just, he's the no-brainer. Why I don't know why Bill wouldn't be as into that, but I don't know. I, there might be some merit to it. Uh, it seems so dramatic. And, like, for Bill to do the whole Mac Jones thing where he's just spitefully putting himself out there, I have a hard time believing that one because, like, Bill's job is on the line. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he's doing something that's going to get him fired. And he's that just does, Yeah, just doesn't yeah. make any sense. It's like, yeah, I'm going to keep putting this guy out there who's bad, and I'm going to get fired at the end of the season just to spite Robert Kraft because this is his guy, and let's watch him suck. No, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And I think anyone with eyes could see that Mac Jones is more talented than Bailey Zappi. It was just time for a change. Uh, you, you you mentioned that uh, you brought up the word dramatic. You guys want to hear arguably the most dramatic part of this entire fucking thing? Oh, yes. Little snippet. Uh, this is about Gerard Mayo. 
Mayo sometimes brought a baseball bat to meetings, swinging it around while the rest of the coaches had their heads down, projecting an attitude that he was separate from the rest, a favored son. Jonathan Kraft and the senior vice president of business affairs for the Kraft Group uh, would chat with staff off to the side, asking why the head coach had made certain decisions. The subtext of the conversations was that life in Gillette Stadium might be different soon. So basically... Uh, and, and this kind of goes into the whole thing where there were reports too, where where Belichick wasn't quite happy that Kraft was allowing Mayo to undermine, or Kraft was undermining Belichick's leadership by putting more stuff into the favored son that is Gerard Mayo. The Gerard Mayo bringing a bat into meetings, that shit's hilarious to me because yeah. I'm sure all that happened was that he might have come. You know how people walk around with baseballs? People walk around with whatever, you know, you do the fake Tiger Woods swing when you're talking. I'm sure he walked around in meetings with a bat, whatever, swinging it. He makes it seem like there where everybody else was sitting like, oh my God, Gerard, maybe he can do whatever he wants. He comes in with the bat. That's the shit that I don't, I don't put any stock in, but it just lends, it, it lends to the big idea where it's, um, you know, like Kraft was was already ready to move on, which I guess too the plan was after this upcoming year, that's when the big change was going to happen, where yeah, they were going right. to move on from Belichick. Mayo was going to come in, but the bad year expedited things. I might put stock into that. That sounds real. But this yeah. whole thing where they're trying to now create a divide between Mayo and a guy who isn't even here anymore and Bill Belichick, I don't get that um, because Belichick drafted Mayo he brought him onto his staff. Yeah. Like, I, it sounds why to me like a lot of happen? talk from people who never played football at a very like a professional, like college or pros. It just yeah. seems like a lot of people that wouldn't understand, I guess, motivation in a sense. The year the Patriots beat the Rams the first time around, Bill Belichick put a giant anchor in the middle of the locker room and used it yes. as a metaphor. Yeah. Yep. And like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't, you yep. don't think a lot of the higher ups, the, the calculator guy sitting in an office are like, why is there a fucking anchor in the locker room? I don't get it. it. Worked. I don't... Yeah. I don't get it. Well, it's because you never played. That's why people who don't level. like Dan Campbell. I'm like, if you yeah. play for Dan Campbell, I would fucking love to play for. We're gonna yeah. bite off ankles. Fuck yeah, let's yeah. do it. Anyways, I'm sorry. I don't even know how yet. that makes sense, but yeah, no, that's about all I got. Where it's just like it's just people who don't understand. And like, I think that's fucking yeah. cool. Your coach walks in with a baseball bat. I'm sure, he you could use a million different metaphors for that one. I hope they revolve around fucking up the other team with baseball bats because that sounds yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I hope it was around like the Walking Dead time when Negan was walking yeah. around with a baseball bat. Where it's like we're gonna beat the shit out of people. Speaking of stories, by the way, the anchor. Did you guys happen to catch the story that Damian Woody gave on the Get Up about Bill Belichick? No. He what he said was uh when. When Belichick drafted him or whatever, they're doing their things, whatever, they're in their offseason thing. Belichick would come up to Damian Woody and be like, Man, you you could be this great player. You just, you know, you gotta envision the player you want to be, talking about his weight. Yeah. And I guess Bill Belichick put Damian Woody into like a plan, like a thing, like a workout thing, all that to lose weight. Belichick footed the the bill. Yeah, he footed the bill for the entire thing. And like then Damian Woody, I think he said he lost like some like 30, 40, something crazy like that. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, he came back. And then obviously Damian Woody was a great offensive lineman here. So like Bell, he said that Bill would go things. down to the Carolinas and visit and him and see how he's doing. Yeah. yeah. He said he'd take him out to dinner and shit like that. And I was like, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. He would. And then also speaking of uh, Belichick talking to people, because there's been a lot of uh, stories coming out too. Calvin Anderson, Patriots signed him. People thought he was going to be something. He got hurt. Uh, Calvin Anderson went to the hospital twice. He said the first phone call when he was done coming out of the hospital was Bill Belichick. And it wasn't, hey, when can you come back? It was strictly yeah. just talking to him, asking how he is, what's going on. Yeah. So the people who say that like Belichick is this ice cold, Dictator. I'm so done with that whole thing. The way I see it, you talk about Belichick in a similar light to... I don't want to say Michael Jordan because that doesn't come, but I'm sure it, he might come off like an asshole, but people still yeah. want to play for him. They're still friends yeah. with him. They're still, it, it's a little bit to a less extent because Michael Jordan was a dick. It's a little bit of a different thing, yeah. but like, I just like all, you hear all these stories about Belichick. So to hear people talk about this power struggle and all that, I'm sure there was to a little bit of an extent, but like, like you said, Liam, it's, 
organized professional sports. There's always yeah. that. Thing. You have that with your teammates sometimes. Like I remember playing baseball. If I would, you know, uh, you know, you play rec baseball, you know, you're either you sit sometimes you're not. Like I was a catcher. Ha ha. Like if someone else was going to be the catcher, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, fuck that. Why is, why is he going to be the catcher? But like I was never like, I'm going to beat him over the head with a fucking bat. I would always be like, yo, fuck you. Like, I hope you suck so I can commit. But like yeah. people on the outside looking at that conversation would look at that and be like, Oh, you know, uh, but, but sometimes starting catcher Mike Sullivan talks about his backup saying he was going to beat him with a bat. Like, that's why not wouldn't it. they all just play as a team? Like, it's not, it. you don't get it. So, yeah, I think a lot of this kind of talking it out with you guys, a lot of it's definitely blown out of proportion. Mm-hmm. And I do think there was some sort of a power struggle strictly with personnel decisions, which is part of probably why Belichick was kind of like ready to go because like i said you you heard in the press conference he loves the team he loves the fans he loves the the organization he loves the personnel he got emotional talking about the fans and everything but it's just time for him to leave but um but yeah that was kind of like a lot of the the main things from the article it was just that you know people are trying to paint this 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 uh basically they're doing um and i know al because it's baseball again you probably heard a lot more about it how the red sox organization they they it's a smear campaign on every single player and coach that leaves that organization. And that's why a lot of the fan base hates ownership. And yeah. I'm just afraid I can see it in the next three or four years, Patriots fans hating the crafts because of how they treat players that start to leave. Like yeah. God forbid, I, like let's just say David Andrews leaves and some things come out about him mm-hmm. saying, yeah, you know, he was actually a problem. He backed Belichick too much in the locker room, blah, blah, blah. How do you, th- you roll your eyes. I can see it happening. I can see yeah. something because it just seems like there's a lot of articles and a lot of things coming out about Belichick that like are meant to skew towards making us, making him look bad. And I think it's fucking bullshit. But here's, here's the difference between the Patriots and the Red Sox owners. Mm-hmm. At least the Patriots owner is trying to do, at least it seems like he's trying to do everything to put his team back in a position to win. I'm not agreeing with the results, but at least he's trying. At least Robert Kraft's like, yeah, go get an offensive coordinator. Okay, so maybe we need a new voice. Okay, it's time. All right, Bill, we're going to part ways. And Gerard, you're going to be the head coach. At least he's making moves. I know we're not a Red Sox podcast, but real quick, with the Red Sox, they don't try to sign anybody. They don't try to make nothing. their team better. Exactly. If anything, they're trying to make their team worse by cutting into payroll. Robert Kraft would not do that. Robert Kraft wouldn't purposely be trying to cut payroll to try to save money and not care about the ramifications of it and how bad the team's going to be. That's the difference. And I'm not trying to play devil's advocate here, but it's like, the you know, it's to me, it's a clear difference in that regard. Yeah. So. That's no, why I sense. that's why I don't have as much of a, a problem with craft as you guys might, because I see other sports and other teams right in our own city doing it. So it's like at least the the efforts there, the heart is there, the intent is there. We may not agree with it, but at least they're trying to get back to where they were, even just five, even just three years ago when they went to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, it's just. Right now, it's just a very, it's a very chaotic, very, uh, very volatile time right now. That's the perfect word for it for the Patriots fan base and the team because there's so many things up in the air. Like you have a head coach, but how's he going to be? You don't really have a GM yet, but the people you do have in place, the guy you eventually you know name as one. What's his philosophy going to be? Are we going to have the same type of drafts? Are we going to go get the big name players? And then when it comes to players. What players are we going to get? Because there's a litany of holes to fill on the offense. There's depth things on the defense, so whatever. Do you get a new kicker? That's another thing, because Chad Ryland, eh, Bryce Berenger's God, so he's fine. Then it's like the draft. Like, what do you, like, are you going to get Jaden Daniels? Because the more I think about it, that's the name. Because I think Marvin Harrison goes, and I do think that um, Caleb William goes. So do you take Drake May, or do you take Jaden Daniels, the more exciting guy? Kind of makes you think, like, do you take Mac Jones or do you take Justin Fields? Like, what you know, it's kind of that same thing. So, there's just so, so many things happening right now. And all yeah. Patriots fans want is a winning, a winning season. If you yeah. are in, if you are in the fight for a playoff spot, that's it. If you're just floating around the one of those final two seeds, or God forbid you make the playoffs, 
so many of these issues will be glossed over, will be looked past. So many things, like, yeah. you know, it's like, okay, yeah, sure, there were some shitty things here, blah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. But we still made the playoffs, you know? So we're still in right. a building, but we're still we're still doing the right thing. It's, just, it's a crazy time right now. Like, we, yeah. this, this offseason and this season, we're either going to be a team on the rise or we're going to turn into a fucking poverty team who yeah. just, you know, sits there and, you know, you have fan bases posting videos of the glory days and all that. I don't want that. I don't want to be the Yankees fan saying, you know, however many rings because we suck now. Like, that's not what I want. Yeah. I want to go into this year like, yeah, we got Jaden Daniels. We got Calvin Ridley. We got these guys going into this. Like, let's go. We got a good offensive line. We drafted we drafted that stud offensive lineman in this year's draft, whoever he is. So I think he'll be good. Like, we signed Michael Wenu. Like, we have these things. It's just – I don't know what the philosophy is anymore. And this is the scary part that Liam and I keep bringing up talking about not having Bill Belichick. You yeah. don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what the, what, like who's going to put more importance on what, like, because obviously quarterbacks important, but you need weapons. You also need an offensive line. Like who do you read? There's, there's so much and there's nothing we can do, but wait. I do like Al's philosophy from the last show where it's like, if you're going to put a positive spin on this whole thing, like we are in strange times, uncharted waters, whatever analogy you want to use. Like we can be very hopeful here. Maybe next season we're like the Texans of this season, or maybe we're building something very long-term. Like we have the opportunity to be like, all right, we have a clean slate. Let's make something new. Let's make something mm -hmm. fun, something to galvanize these states in New England for the next couple of years. Like, let's build mm -hmm. something. This is the first time this has happened in 20 some odd years. So, yeah, everyone's yeah. going to freak out. It's been so long since this has actually happened that, you know, we usually assume the worst. But there's a chance to be very optimistic here with, like mm -hmm. you said, you know, we got free agents. Calvin Ridley would be sweet. What quarterback are we going to get? We're going to have exciting rookies to watch next year. We were able to get excited about the rookies last year, and they were all like, secondary players a defensive players yep. a, a kicker and a punter like and we were excited about those so now we're expecting a bigger draft and a bigger offseason where we're going to get key players like quarterbacks wide receivers you know perhaps a new running back like friggin stuff like that and there's so much reason to be optimistic it's just hard to look past it because it's such uncharted waters for patriots fans dude it's scary it it's scary. It is scary. It, honestly this is the time though for the patriots to do this because right now the Bruins and the Celtics are kicking ass. So if the Patriots want to have maybe a down year or two or a building yeah. year, like Patri or New England fans can kind of put their focus yeah. somewhere else for now. Like, you know, this is the time. And then once that, once those teams start to dip, the Patriots rise up and God knows when the Red Sox are going to do it. But you know, the yeah. Patri like this is the time. It's just, it's like, I just want to have a good, we all do. Just want to yeah. have a good season. That's it. I don't want to end sure. the year saying if we only had a good offense, I'm, fucking sick yeah. of that yeah the the roles are reversed because the patriots dynasty was good for 20 years and that carried you know some bad years for the red sox where they won two championships in that time period the bruins won one uh did the, uh, one. bruins won one, one. one. Yep. celtics won one bruins almost won one against the fucking st louis but um yep. friggin and you know all those teams had down years but everyone in new england could be like all right the patriots are sick now it's time for those other teams the celtics have been consistently yep. incredible for the celtics are the team right now, now. they're the yeah, ones who are. everybody can yeah. say like we're back to this like the bruins are still up there but mm -hmm. the celtics are far and away the the best yeah. professional sports team in new england i yeah. actually i actually went to the game last night against the rockets they looked good they yeah, yeah, good. yeah, they so, did. That, that, what a sick game to go to, too. Friggin', the Rockets are a fun team to watch with Eme back. Uh, would you guys say Boston as a sports town is it a basketball town? Uh, like, just in general, oh, this, is, this is this is easy all for time. me. I, I think it is, but you got you guys go, and then I'll and then I, uh, I'll go. I think it's there's no wrong answer. I, I, don't, I don't even no, have, I don't I have an answer. Actually, I honestly, that. I think I there's one don't. wrong answer. But yeah, yeah, and I'm gonna I tell truly you what the wrong don't know. Is. I, I've heard, I've heard a bunch of people say different answers, and I I don't know myself. Like I'm not it's, even gonna give an answer. It's not a baseball city anymore. If you say baseball, you're wrong. Yeah. Well, not not see see my thing. If you but I'm if saying all call, time like yeah. You know, that's, what's, that's what's, what I'm what's saying. the team that galvanizes all of Boston that all oh, of Boston that's, supports? That's easy. That's yep. easy. Boston Bruins. It's easy. Okay. That's because I've heard yeah, that a lot. 
it's 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 different when because what i was gonna say you can call the 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 new england like as a whole not like right now kind of in general they're not a football city like they are just not like football they are the biggest thing recently but no you could make the case for the red Sox if you want yeah you could definitely make the case for the celtics one of the most historic teams in the nba in just sports it almost seems like the patriots are the back half they are they definitely are they don't have they don't have the cachet they don't have like all the the clips the memories they're all kind of newer the the when the bruins are in the playoffs it's fucking different you know why because you could look at anybody walking the street and ju- it just it, they just look they just look like fucking hockey people everybody's cold everybody's fucking Everyone's miserable we teeth. love it though we all want to fight with everybody else like we hate every other team that comes in here but it's just it's it, it and like i think the bruins more than any other team they embrace the fan base. And I think it might just be because playing in playing hockey, the fans are kind of on top of you similar to Mm -hmm. to basketball, but it's just different. It's a, it's a different thing. If you're going to go watch a hockey game, you got to freeze your ass off in there too. It's just a different thing. I would say that new England, Boston hockey town, uh, yeah. But I don't think that you, you could convince me of anything except the Patriots. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Honestly, and think about how things were six years ago. Six years ago, the Red Sox had won the World Series, winning 119 games. Yep. The Patriots won their final Super Bowl of that era. And the Celtics were starting to kind of bring it together. And the Bruins were slowly making their way toward the, that next season. But the Celtics and the Bruins were toward the bottom. Now it's done a complete 360. Yeah, yeah it's, it's only in, in only five, six short years. Yeah, yeah. And see, and you know what, guy, and we'll end it on this. I think that's that's the good part of being from being a New England sports fan. Yeah. There's always another team yeah. out there. There yeah. always is. Oh, yeah, the Patriots are rebuilding, but the Celtics are the best team in the league. The Bruins, the Bruins are definitely going to make a deep run. It it does not matter. That's just yeah. I understand why everybody hates this region because we're just we're never down in it. We're never down at all. So uh, do you guys have any parting thoughts before we get out of here and go watch some playoff football later? Let's be optimistic. Um, uh, real quick, Phil Perry saying that Gerard Mayo could get fired if he doesn't pick oh, the right coach yeah, in this draft. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. End with that. It is so, it's so premature and so just Boston media. It's like give the guy a chance to make the pick first. Like if it was like JJ McCarthy or Bo Nix at number three, I'd be like, all right, like what are we doing here? Yeah. But if you take Jaden Daniels or Drake Me, or if you don't take a quarterback and you take Marvin Harrison Jr., why is anybody gonna get on Gerard Mayo for that? Like, give it yeah. time to breathe. That just that aggravated me. Um well, that's there not was a good start to the season. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah just... no, Liam, that's what he he said on 98.5. He said, uh, and then I think he said it afterwards too, but I heard it on 98.5 too. He was basically saying like, Gerard Mayo, he's got to look out, like paraphrasing. Like, you know, if you don't, if, if he doesn't pick, a, if he doesn't nail a quarterback, get a quarterback, his job is on the line. He's gone. Dude hasn't even been the coach for for 24 hours yet. Like, constantly. Exactly. It's like, relax. That just, that just aggravated me. That was, yeah. that was so stupid. Yeah, see, and this, see, this is what, this is what Boston Media does. This is why you all, the majority of you are just so annoying. The guy hasn't even been here for a little bit. You're already trying to write his obituary and trying to get him out. Like, yeah. let him. But the good thing about Mayo, though, he played here. So he knows how the media is. So another another good thing about bringing him in. But yeah, um, but yeah I think Gerard Mayo, you got a leash. Do your thing. Let's see what happens. I think we can all move forward right now with the Patriots with a little bit of optimism. And yeah, we'll go from there. Um, hopefully we don't need any more fucking emergency podcasts. I don't want anything crazy to happen. Can we just like let the playoffs go? And then like after the season, we'll start talking about things. But, um, but yeah, so maybe, uh, next, next week we'll do the, we'll do the Belichick moments. Um, I think that'll be a good time assuming nothing else crazy happens, but until then, uh, you guys got anything you want to add before we get out? No, good to go. All right. So, uh, that's uh go Cowboys, go lions. And we will end on that. And Yeah. Fuck the Eagles.